Our guest is Ring of Honor World Heavyweight Champion and Television Champion, Jay Lethal. How you doing tonight? I'm doing great. I live uh, in Tampa, Florida. Sun is shining pretty much every day. Uh, and who, who wouldn't be uh, happy about that? I am jealous. I'm in hot, sticky, urban Philadelphia. It is hot. It is sticky. It is suckish. And you're coming back here. Well, wait, wait till the winter. Yeah, well... Then you get plenty. Of, well, you're living in Tampa, so I don't feel bad. You're probably gonna live it up all all winter in in shorts and <laughs> shorts and t-shirts as I'm freaking shoveling snow. It's gonna be awful. It's gonna be awful. But well, you're coming back to Philadelphia out of the sun and fun on Friday. You square off against Roderick Strong for the world title Friday night in a rematch from Death Before Dishonor. After wrestling a 60 minute time limit draw with Roddy, uh, what did you learn that you can apply to the rematch? And do you have more respect for Roddy now that after that? that epic match well first of all i'm going to try to end this one in 60 seconds <laughs> Please. <laughs> uh, but uh I, I did learn that uh roderick strong well i won't say i learned it because i knew going in roderick strong is one of the, the the best wrestlers out there it was really a learning experience more so for myself knowing that i uh i can do something that one of my idols brags about constantly Ric Flair, uh, constantly bragging about 60-minute matches. Uh, so it was cool to see that, much like my idol, I could hang just like him. Mike Curie? Uh Your champion versus champion match uh, against Jay Briscoe was something that's pretty unique uh, and that's not seen really much in wrestling anymore. But uh, perhaps not coincidentally, WWE is having a champion versus champion match uh, between Seth Rollins and John Cena at SummerSlam, which I think a lot of fans believe was inspired by ROH. Um, so with that in mind, how much influence do you believe that ROH and what you guys do over there has on a big company on WWE and what they do? Huh. Uh, I, I just happen to think that it's total coincidence. Uh, in wrestling, you're, just, you're constantly trying to do, uh, A, what's never been done, or be what hasn't been done in a really long time. Uh, and I can only remember such an event happening. Uh, well, the one that sticks out in my head is Warrior and Hogan, uh, Intercontinental title and uh, the world title. <clears throat> so that that was uh, our mindset, and I'm sure it's their mindset too, to say that we inspired their storyline. I mean, if I could find out for a chance that that's a hundred percent true, gosh, I'd be so honored. Um, man, what an honor to be able to say that you did something that inspired the, the number one wrestling company in the world. Uh, man, it, only if I could find out if that was 100% true. So going on, if me thinking that it's a hundred percent true, I'm going to say, since I think it's a hundred percent true, if it is, Man, what an honor uh, to, to to be able to do something in the wrestling business to inspire the number one wrestling company in the world, especially since for years uh, they have done things that inspired every other wrestling promotion, you know? Brendan Gavin? I saw you did an interview with Sports Illustrated to promote Field of Honor this Saturday in Brooklyn, yeah. and yeah. ESPN also announced that they would be at WWE SummerSlam on Sunday. So this is certainly a big weekend for wrestling with these major outlets covering the events. Does it surprise mm -hmm. you that these major media publications are beginning to cover pro wrestling more? And what do you think the future holds for these outlets promoting wrestling? It, it, it was very shocking to me. Very shocking to me. Uh, but, I mean, that is a true testament to where wrestling is at this point in time, I think right now it is a great time for professional wrestling. Uh, a lot of great talents out there, a lot of different options. That that also helps wrestling too when there, there's so many different options. Uh, and I got to say, being the Ring of Honor World Champion, what a time to be the champion uh, in this tremendous wrestling period, this, this boom period. Uh, so to speak. Um, I think it's amazing. And things like Sports Illustrated and ESPN and stuff covering wrestling, uh, gosh, it, 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 it's, 
it's amazing. I mean, I'm almost at a loss for words because I still can't believe uh, that it's happening, or, or I can't believe that it took so long, you know. But I, I got to say, for me, um, I can't speak for everyone, but for myself, man, I, I, I couldn't think of a, a, a more perfect time uh, to be the number one man in Ring of Honor uh, than right now. Like I said, it's just a perfect storm going on. A great time in wrestling with options and such. And now the, the bigger news, the sports news, people like ESPN and Sports Illustrated picking and covering up for wrestling. It's, it's unbelievable. It's unbelievable. Well, Nigel McGuinness mandated that you will be forced to defend each of your titles separately moving forward. What is it like first carrying both the heavyweight and the television title at the same time? And what is it like having to focus on two different number one contenders, one for the World Heavyweight Championship and one for the Television Championship? Uh, it's tough. It's tough. For starters, I had to get a new suitcase because putting both belts in the bag, I went to lift it up and my uh, the handle snapped. Good problem to have, though. Good problem to have. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Champion. If if I were on Twitter, it'd be a hashtag champion problem. Double champion problem. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, it, 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 it's first of all, um, I keep using this word honor, but it, it is an honor, especially since no one ever in Ring of Honor has done this before. Um, and any time you can be the the, the catalyst to start a new category uh, or the first man into a new category, which this category would be double champion or undisputed champion or however you wanted to word it. Man, there's sometimes no higher honor in wrestling than uh, for moments like this. Um, And uh, I got to say, it is a lot of work. It's very stressful. Um, The, there's a, a number one contender for the television championship and there's a number one contender for the world championship and going, having our matches with guys like Roderick strong. I mean, now this is definitely going to be proven difficult uh, for me. Uh, if I thought it was going to be easy, I was dead wrong. Uh, so hopefully not. I don't have too many matches that go an hour. Um, especially with Roderick Strong, because uh, he just, Roddy loves to bring it to you, you know, which 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 is awesome because it just, it makes you have really spectacular matches. Um, but two times a night, if I would have to do that, oh, um, I'm afraid of uh, what my night in bed would look like. <laughs> Mikey, are you? Uh- there, there was a, a lot of buzz surrounding uh, Ring of Honor's partnership with Destination America uh, because of the possibility of reaching new viewers. Um, so now that ROH has been on Destination America for a couple months, uh, how do you feel the relationship has been uh, for ROH, and what do you think it's done in terms of maybe altering ROH's profile within professional wrestling? Well, the number one thing that it did and is doing is uh, it's it's allowing Ring of Honor to reach the masses. I, I've always thought, this is my second time here in Ring of Honor. I've always thought, even when my first uh, time in Ring of Honor, Ring of Honor had one of the greatest locker rooms in professional wrestling. It's just their problem was it, it was having a hard time getting that product out there for the world to see. Um, and now that I'm back in my second time in Ring of Honor, with the... Sinclair Broadcasting, buying Ring of Honor, uh, and the acquisition of getting aired on Destination America. Uh, it's exactly what Ring of Honor needs. It's exactly what Ring of Honor needs. Uh, and I, I, I feel wholeheartedly that it's actually working. I mean, it, I mean the proof is in the pudding. The numbers, I mean, don't lie. It's, Ring of Honor is getting their product out to the masses. Um that was a two-part question. What was your other part? I'm sorry. Just basically how you feel maybe being on Destination America and uh, having more of a platform than previously, how that might change the profile of ROH within professional wrestling. Gotcha, gotcha. Well, like I said, uh, Ring of Honor has had and still continues to have one of the greatest locker rooms in the world. Uh, and their only problem was 
getting it out there to the masses. And I, I will say that it, it is, at this particular point in time, pretty cool that Destination America has two wrestling promotions uh, running at the same time, pretty much. Um, that That is included in when I say what a great time for professional wrestling. I remember a long time ago having to flip the channels back and forth to see what WWF was doing and what WCW was doing. Uh, man, if they came on back to back, then there'd be no reason for me to switch the channels. Uh, both people would get my ratings because I would just leave on that channel all day long, much like any hardcore wrestling fan, <laughs> hardcore wrestling fan would. Um, but yeah, I mean, it, 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 it's got to do nothing but good to be on Destination America because, like I said, and I, I hate to sound like a broken record, but uh. Ring of Honor's got the greatest locker room in the world, and uh, we just got to get that product out to the masses so that we can prove it to everybody. PG? We've always said that you're the complete package. You're one of the best in the business inside the ring working matches, <laughs> but also working the mic, and that's not to toot your own horn. But in your opinion, which is more important to a wrestler's success, and is there an aspect of your game you're still trying to improve at? Hmm. Okay, I, I, I'll start with the, the second question first. Is there an aspect of my game that I'm still trying to improve at? Um, if you ask any wrestler that, um, hopefully any good wrestler, the, their answer would all be the same, which is I'm still trying to improve on everything. There, there's always room uh, to improve. Um, the minute you feel like, oh, I'm good with this, let me just work on this, I think that's that's the start of any wrestler's downfall. I mean, any performer, any any professional athlete, I feel, uh, once once you stop because you think, oh, this is good enough, and let me just focus on this, I think that that's a bad way to think about it. So to answer your question, uh, I, I'm still trying to work on everything that I possibly can, um, especially and I'll add a little bonus there, especially my in-ring work. I, I love being on the microphone, um, and I'm still trying to improve on that. Uh, but I just, man, if I could do something more with my in-ring work, even though I feel that it's good, uh, if I could make it better, um, that would that would be great for me. Also, which do I think is more important? Uh, the in-ring work or the microphone work? That's a very interesting question. Uh, and I'll try not to give you the lame, boring answer, which is both. Uh, if I had to pick, I'm going to force myself now. Uh, I'm going to force myself to pick one. If I had to pick, to have good microphone skills or good in-ring wrestling skills, I think I would... Pick. Dun, 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 dun. I think I would pick the microphone skills, um, especially since growing up, uh, a man that I looked up to and got to work with, Ric Flair, was the greatest uh, on the microphone. Just, I mean, I feel like a lot of people possibly watched Ric Flair matches. Um, because he was so good at wanting, he was so good at getting you to want to see those matches. Uh, but on the same token, his in-ring wrestling was great, and it made you want to watch again. Uh, so it's like a double-edged sword. But I think if I had to pick, if you if you put a, a a gun to my head, and I know in this day and age we shouldn't even use that uh, term, put a gun to your head. But if you put a gun to my head, I would pick <laughs> the microphone skills. For, for the record, we would not put a gun to your head. We, we like you, Jay Lethal. We would not do that. That's just not our style, man. Maybe another show, but not this show. Uh, <laughs> oh, earlier, you mentioned your success and the success of Ring of Honor. Ring of Honor, in recent months, has been thriving, and the company has hitched their wagon to you at this crucial time. What is the pressure like for you knowing that the company, a company like Ring of Honor that's been around for more than a decade now, is it's hitching their wagon to you. You're the face of the company for the foreseeable future. What's the pressure like for you? Actually, uh, and I don't. I hope this doesn't sound too cocky of me, um, but I, I'm not really feeling any pressure in that aspect. I feel like, I mean, uh, 
to use your words, uh, I feel like if Ring of Honor has hitched its wagon to me, it is because um, they have they are enjoying, they like, approve, agree with everything that I'm doing. Therefore, um, if I didn't just remain to do what it is I do, uh, then I feel that I, it could have some negative impact or negative effect. I feel like I'm in the spot that I'm in because, uh, like I said, I hope this doesn't sound too cocky, but I feel like I'm in the spot I'm in because I, I deserve it and I work hard and I have been doing something uh, that the company likes. Um, so therefore, just keep doing what I'm doing um, and the company will keep liking it and they'll be happy that they put me in that spot. So therefore, uh, I'm really not feeling any pressure um, in, in that in that aspect, like you said, uh, just because I feel like I'm just going to keep doing what I was been doing that got me here. Obviously, I, I mean, it got me here, so I've been doing something right. Uh, no need for the extra pressure, just no need to change it up, no need to make it more interesting, if that's uh, possible. Just keep on doing what I've been doing, and uh, everything should be good. No? That's my logic, anyway. Mike Yai? Yeah. Um, well, your run as a heel uh, has been extremely successful so far. Far. And even though you're obviously able to cut great promos and generate your own heat, um, you've done it with the aid of your manager, Truth Martini. Uh, how did the decision to team up with Truth uh, originally come to pass? And um, why do you feel he's been beneficial uh, to what's arguably the greatest stretch of your career? Oh, my God. I, I think Truth Martini, when it comes to the wrestling business, is a genius uh, when you take some of his views and you take it outside of professional wrestling, he may seem a bit crazy. Uh, but in inside of professional wrestling, man, I just believe that he, he's a genius. Um, my second run here in Ring of Honor is when I first met Truth Martini, and I got to see some of his work. And for years, I wanted to to, to be the bad guy. For years. In fact, when I did my Black Machismo character in TNA, I wanted to be, because my favorite Randy Savage era was the Macho King, you know, and he was a bad guy. That is what I wanted to do. So I wanted Sanjay to be the good guy trying to save Liz or so Cal Val. Uh, but they, they wanted it the other way around. So for years, I wanted to be that bad guy. And I was actually given the chance to do it, and I, I, I begged and pleaded that uh, I do this with Truth Martini because I had become such a fan of his his work and just picking his brain and just standing behind the camera doing some of his promos, uh, just sitting next to him in the locker room and hearing some of his views on wrestling. Uh, we share a lot of the same views, and I've actually learned a few things from him. Man, I just I I I think he's so good. So it was important for me uh, to have him by my side during this uh, this uh, heel, how to use that word, during the, this heel run. Um, and I, I think he brings a lot, a lot to the table. Definitely adds some dimensions. It, it, it's to the point now where if I came out through the curtain by myself, you feel one type of way. And then when I come out through the curtain with Truth Martini, then it's the full package. I mean, it, it, it's hard to explain. Um, but yeah, I, I, I couldn't, I couldn't have done this. Uh, and that's that's a lot to say. I couldn't have done this without Truth Martini. I feel I could have gotten close. He definitely adds that extra um that I would need. Um, that I have needed and that I do need. Um, but yeah, I definitely don't think this would have been the same. I'm not so sure that I even would be in the spot that I'm in right now. Uh, if Truth Martin and I hadn't gotten together and created, uh, what he would call something special. PG, final question. 
in the past, you've mentioned Ric Flair, Randy Savage, Bret Hart, Ricky Steamboat, among other legends that have influenced you during your career. But is there an active wrestler you look to for inspiration or to keep pushing you from a competitive edge? Yes, yes. I'll, I'll, uh, I'll let you in on this little secret here. I've always felt um, some of the greatest wrestlers have this this aggression, uh, this this ruthlessness to them. Not all of them show it constantly, um, but it, there's this this sharp bite, this, this ravage edge to them. Um, and someone that I felt helped me add that to everything that is Jay Lethal. Um, someone that I really studied for a short period of time uh, is actually Chris Benoit. Um, he was active at the time. Um, he actually helped me well, as much as someone could help you with that with never meeting or talking to them, you know. Uh, yeah, helped me add what I thought I was missing, which was that that uh, aggressiveness and that ruthless edge. And not aggressive where I'm just too aggressive, you know. I just Every wrestler perceives wrestling to be something different. I, I, I thought this is what I needed. So I, I actually studied Chris Benoit. But as far as that, uh, every wrestler who watches a wrestling match, you know, it's hard for us to watch as wrestling fans. Uh, so now when we watch a wrestling match, a lot, for a lot of us, it's almost like a studying tool. And every once in a while, we'll see something that we like from some particular wrestler. Um, and that actually happened a lot for me watching um, a lot of Booker T matches. There's a lot of Booker T stuff that have uh, that he did that I actually I, I fell in love with. Part of the reason was I got to meet, uh, meet Booker T. He took a special liking to me. And at the time, my tag partner, Consequences Creed, who is Xavier Woods now, uh, so it was cool getting to hang out with Booker T and him sharing and dropping some knowledge on the both of us. Um, but as far as that, I don't think there's, and it, it kind of sounds mean to say, I don't think there's anybody else out there that, that uh, did that for me, but uh, I don't mean it like that. But yeah, as far as to answer your question, that's about it. A huge thank you to Ring of Honor World Heavyweight and Television Champion Jay Lethal. Catch him stealing the show Friday in Philadelphia, Saturday in Brooklyn. Tell the fans where they can support you, Jay. Well, for those of you still listening, if you're not asleep uh, by now, <laughs> I feel like I have the most boring voice. Uh, I like uh, it. When the, when the camera's not on, I feel like it's just, I feel like I sound like the dry eyes. <laughs> ben Stein. No, you're definitely not Ben Stein. Yeah. Far superior to Ben Stein. But uh, in 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 this day and age, everyone has a social media thing, a Twitter, a Facebook, everything. Uh, the thing I use the most, which will be pretty much the, what I plug, is my Twitter. And my Twitter handle is at the lethal J, and everything is spelled out. Even J at the end is J A Y. Everything is. The Lethal J. I even have a website, thelethalj.com. Somebody asked me why or how did you come up with The Lethal J. Uh, and actually, I didn't come up with it. Um, uh, years ago, I wrestled a few shows with Chris Candido. And every time I would come into the locker room, even from the first day I've ever met him, didn't even get to shake his hand. Uh, I walked into the locker room, and out loud he goes, Ah, it's the Lethal J. Um, <laughs> and that would be the way that he would always say hi to me. And like I said, it started before I even met him and shook his hand. I came in the locker room and right away, ah, it's the Lethal J. Uh, so what an homage to him I felt when he passed away. But I'm, plus, I liked hearing it, the Lethal J. Um, so I just I turned it into almost everything I have, thelethalj.com. My Facebook is the Lethal J, but I don't really use the Facebook too much. Uh, but yeah, that's uh, my the two things that I'd like to plug: uh, the Mick Foley cheap plug pop, uh, <laughs> which would be the Twitter and the and, and the website. Oh, listen, we appreciate your time, Jay. Good luck this weekend at both Friday's show and Saturday's show, and uh, good luck moving forward, man. Thank you very much.